hello what's up youtube photographer ronnie sweat and i try and this tutorial you're going to be learning a step-by-step -step process regarding high-end skin retouching from the very start to the very end and in this tutorial you're going to be understanding every step that we incur when it comes to skin retouching using frequency separation and also if at all you find the video helpful simply hit the like button because it's going to help you to push and recommend this video to many people out there so this is going to be a little bit a slow tutorial so that every person or beginner or if at all you're struggling with skin retouching in general you can understand each and every step so what we're going to do we're going to learn like i've said frequency separation a brief information about frequency separation you're going to be doing frequency separation in photoshop and what you are understand about frequency separation it is a skin retouching technique that is going to divide the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer in the high frequency layer we have our textures and also in the low frequency layer we have our colors so by coming to the background layer right here we are going to press ctrl j twice to create those two layers so ctrl j once ctrl j twice or you can as well drag and drop here to create a new layer so after doing this we're going to rename this to low frequency some people prefer to call it the color layer and this is the texture layer or it is called the high frequency layer so after i have created these two layers we want to independently involve the colors or divide the image and divide it according to colors and textures so what we are going to do basically we're going to turn off the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer. like i said the low frequency layer is the color layer so we select the low frequency layer so right now we just want to make sure that the low frequency layer is containing only and only the colors so in order to achieve that we are simply going to come right above here and select filter and we're going to come to blur and you're going to come down to Gaussian blur right here. So when you come to Gaussian blur, you have to take the radius all the way down so that you can look at the textures that look or seem to be prominent. Remember, this is the most important step if at all you want to remain with and also retain skin texture at the end of the skin retouching. So we don't want to retouch the image and we lose out completely on the natural textures or the natural skin details in the image so just always want to retain the skin texture in the image so we're going to look at the image and look for a reference point so you can zoom in and zoom out so you can see right now this forehead area seems to have more skin textures than the rest of the skin meaning when we come and we start blurring out the skin details from the image and they start getting lost completely and we can no longer see them we are going to automatically lose out on the tiniest details that don't seem to be visible in the image. So remember, the reference point has to be the area that has prominent skin textures within the photo. So what we're going to do basically, we're going to left click on this pointer and hold down. And you move as you're, you're releasing. So you left click and drag as you're, you are releasing, as you're looking at the textures on the skin. So we're going to click and move as we're looking at the texture. So we are going to stop at the point when these textures are just starting to disappear. Don't lose out completely that you can't identify where the textures are. You stop at the point when they are just starting to disappear. And that is going to be a determinant point for the overall skin details. So you have to be careful with this step. So I'm just going to take it up just like that. Up to when... The textures are just starting to disappear you can see my textures are just starting to disappear at a radius of seven pixels so depending on the image you're working on your radius may be different because you may be having a differing level of skin textures within your image so mine is seven and after that we're just going to click ok but when you do this you're going to notice that um the textures are going to disappear from the image and it's going to look a little bit blurry as you can see in this image so the next thing we're going to do we're going to come to the high frequency line now select it and activate it by clicking on this visibility icon 
and after doing that we're simply going to come to image and we're going to come down to apply image so when we come to apply image remember we have different bit depth of photos so right now we have a 16-bit photo right here and sometimes if at all you're working with jpeg files they're going to be basically in eight so these two bit depth usually have a different technique of frequency separation when it comes to the apply image step so for this step we're going to come and under source you can see that we have the name of the image right here reflected right here so after that we're going to come and we select the low frequency layer we now want to extract our textures from the low frequency layer where we eliminated them so just come to the channel right here and make sure the channel is set to rgb and after doing that we're just going to come since we're working with a 16-bit image so this is where these are going to be deferring so if i told you working with a 16-bit image simply come the blend mode and change it to add or pass at 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is 2 and offset set to 0 and make sure you turn on the invert option and you see the textures on this gray kind of layer which is going to be lacking colors meaning you have successfully remained with the textures on this layer which is the high frequency layer then if i told you working on an 8-bit image it means the invert option will not be turned on and this time around for an 8-bit image of course you have to select the low frequency layer then the blend mode for an 8-bit image is going to be subtract the scale has to be 2 and offset 128 opacity 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check and the invert option is not going to be turned on and after that you can proceed and press ok so for my case it is a 16-bit image meaning i'm going to be using a blend mode of add scale is to offset zero and i'll turn on the invert option and simply click ok so now you may be wondering why is the image looking like this the image is looking like this because we have taken out the colors from the image and we have just remained with the textures in this very image so just want a blend mode that is going to eliminate the gray color from this very photo so that blend mode is going to be known as linear light so just going to come right here to the blend mode and change it from normal change it all the way down to linear light so in this way you're going to get back the information in the image the way it was meant to be before so we want to see if at all we have successfully divided the frequencies of this image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer and maybe if at all we combine both layers we can end up with the same image that we had at the start of the tutorial so I'm just going to come and select both layers and press ctrl g on the keyboard to group them so you can use ctrl g or you can use command g if at all using mac so we're going to rename that to frequency separation like that so frequency separation so after doing this we're going to simply come and we hide the background layer you can see there is no difference between the on the initial image and our separated image so you can as well prove this by checking if at all you only have colors or textures by hiding the color layer and also when you hide the texture layer, you can see that you only have colors so combining both is going to create for you the same image that we had so after we have successfully divided the frequencies of this image we want first of all fine tune each individual layer in the group that we have selected regarding the high frequency layer and also the low frequency layer like i said we always want perfect the high frequency layer alone and also perfect the low frequency layer alone so that we combine when we combine the two perfected layers we end up with a perfectly retouched image so we're going to come right here and hide the high frequency layer so that we can first of all work with the color all of frequency layer without any distraction regarding textures that's why we have hidden the high frequency layer so right now to work on the color layers or the colors we are going to come and select the mixer brush tool so you can come under the brushes i'm using photoshop 2020 so you can come under the brushes right click and get the mixer brush tool and if at all you're having an older version of photoshop you may right click right here and you find your mixer brush tool here so for whichever tool you select within photoshop the settings for that tool are always going to be 
above here. So after selecting the tool, we want to set it well. So just come to the settings and click on the left click on the drop down arrow and make sure the hardness is set to zero and make sure soft round brush is selected because we want the brush to be as smooth as possible. So also make sure clean brush after each and every stroke. So clean brush is also selected because we want the brush to be automatically cleaned by Photoshop as we are brushing on the skin. Then you have two options right here. One is load the brush after each and every stroke. And the second one is going to be clean the brush after each and every stroke. Remember, when we are working with skin tone, you're going to be working with different or differing colors. So meaning we always want Photoshop to automatically clean the brush for us as we are working on different areas that have different colors. So we are going to be using a weight of 9 because as we are using the Mr. Brush tool, we don't want the brush to spill colors to another area. So load is 75 because we don't want the brush to have so, so much color embedded in it, but we just want it to be an average load on the brush. The mix, we always want it to perfectly mix, mix the colors or blend the colors. That's why it is at 90 and the flow of 100 because we don't want to paint on a given area for a long time. That's why we have set this to 100. So some people or educators on YouTube prefer to use a same figure all the way through. So you always have to work with what works best for you. So for my case, weight is 9, load 75, mix 90, flow 100%. So after you have done this, the next thing is going to be this option that says smooth. So always make sure the smooth option is on 10%. Then the important point is sample all layers. So sometimes when you're retouching and you want to work with the high frequency layer turned on, when you check this option, it means the brush is going to be sampling information from the layers within the group, which is the colors and the texture. So if at all we paint on the forehead area with this option turned on, you can notice that the forehead is going to also have this kind of rough black texture added to it because the brush, you have told the brush or you have commanded the brush right here to sample information from the texture layer or from all the layers in the group and paint them back to the low frequency layer, which we don't want. So always make sure sample all layers is not turned on. So after we have done this, by the way, you can zoom in by using Ctrl plus or zoom out by using Ctrl minus. Then after setting up the brush, the next thing is going to be the brush uses use and also how to apply it. So sometimes when you're working and the brush is showing the plus icon, simply press the caps lock key on the keyboard. And sometimes to reduce or increase on the size of the brush, you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard. Like I said, when you're working with colors, we hide the texture layer so that we are not distracted along the way by the textures. So to apply the Mr. Brush tool, we simply left click and hold down. So we look for an area that has a color and our aim is to blend the colors so that we can have an e a very even skin tone transition or blending. So basically we are going to hold down the left key. So you left click and hold down and simply move the brush in the direction of the way an area is shaped. But as we're moving the brush, you always have to keep within the boundaries or the borders of the color you're working with. And you have to move the strokes of the brush depending or according to the shape of that area. So you can see I'm moving the brush in this kind of movement up and down just like this and not like this because it's going to be destroying the image if at all you move it in an opposite direction and it's going to make you lose out the original shape of the model's face. So you keep on mixing a color so after it is blended well release the or the left click button and you simply click once again and hold down and you drag the mixer brush tool in the direction and that is going to be blending that area so like i said always move the strokes depending how that area is shaped and that is going to perfect that area so you may notice that the image is looking a little bit plastic as we are doing all this. 
and you may be wondering like at the start of the tutorial i told you that we are uh, we want to remain with so you can see where the colors are transitioning from one area to another always mix that area that border get the smaller size so you have to keep on playing around with different sizes of the mixer brush tool and you don't use a very normal or the same brush tool size so you have to keep on adjusting using the bracket keys depending on the area you're working on so you can see we have worked on the forehead and it looks a little bit plastic so in order to see the final results after working on an area you can turn on the high frequency layer and by turning on and off the overall group you can start we have blended the transitions on the forehead area and it is still retaining the textures so we have worked on the forehead area so it is time to work on the rest of the skin so we shall hide the high frequency layer once again and simply get the brush and since the cheek is moving in this direction still up to down i'll have to move the brush in that kind of direction to maintain the original shape of the model's face so you can see how i'm working and i'm mixing colors that are looking alike or similar so i'm just going to be working on these areas just like that so i'm basically mixing colors that are looking alike so i keep on releasing the left click button after working on a given color so i can left click once again to work on a different area so you can see that this really works and it does the magic so the area where it is transitioning from one color to another i'll get a smaller brush and work on that area so that we can create a very nice smooth harmony or, or a very nice transition within those colors so I'm just going to reduce on the size and come and also work in these other areas so that we can create a very nice transition. So basically I don't want to add anything because I want you to see the results as we are working in real time and I don't want it to be like I'm showing you magic after forwarding. So you can see that the more plastic it is getting to look the better the results. So you can see the before, after, before, after so far. So hide the high frequency layer and still select the low frequency layer and we're going to work on the nose area since it's moving from an up down kind of movement i'll mix the shadows alone on the nose area and also mix this other end of the shadow area all the dark tones in the nose area just like that and mix the highlight alone and come right here to the eyes and also perfect those areas so basically i'm working or I'm looking and identifying the areas that have an even skin tone transitions and I'm mixing them using the mixer brush tool. So come to the neck area and simply retouch these areas. So you mix those areas depending on the colors in those areas to perfect them or fine tune them. So the other thing as you're mixing, always make sure you mix at a distance because when you zoom all the way in, you won't be able to see the uneven skin tone transitions in the image so always retouch at a distance so that you can see and also easily identify the uneven skin tone transitions within your image and for better results and it is also a, a, a time saving technique when you retouch at a distance because you're going to be covering a very wide area within a short period of time unlike when you zoom all the way in because you won't be seeing the uneven skin tone transition so that is how you can easily retouch so retouch at a distance every single time you're working on the image unless it is time or unless when it is time to remove or clean up the skin and remove blemishes so we're going to turn on the texture layer or the high frequency and you can see this is the image before after before after you have still or maintain the original skin texture in the image so after doing that we're going now to perfect the areas we may have missed out when we are using the mixer brush tool so for those areas simply come and get the lasso tool make sure it is in new selection mode make sure it is selected right here the feathering is 22 pixels and after doing that we are now going to make a selection on the skin so let me first of all elaborate for you something here so the reason for a feather angle of 22 pixels is because you can see 
I've pressed Q. When the phalanx is high, the edges of the selection are going to be very smooth. But when you leave the feathering all the way to zero pixels, it means that is going to make you have a sharper edge when you select the skin area. You can see how sharp the edges are. So basically, always make sure the feathering is around 22 pixels. And the reason for putting it in new selection mode is because every single time we're working on a different area, we always want to automatically deselect the previous selection by coming and creating a new selection. So after you have done this, the next thing is going to be perfecting the skin. So like I said, this is more of a perfection step. So it is now okay to, for you to zoom all the way in and the selections always have to be made according to the shape or the way the, the face is shaped rather. So create a selection, simply come back to filter, come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So this is going to bring back the initial radius we had for our frequency separation or when we are dividing the frequencies of this very image. So when this radius comes up, simply left click and start dragging. So you keep on dragging as you are, you are releasing the button. Yeah, you keep on releasing until when you feel like the texture is okay and or enough for you. So you stop at the point when the textures are looking better and realistic to your eyes. Then the other trick I can share with you, always multiply the radius by 3 and just type in that value. So the radius we had for our frequency separation process was 7. So 7 times 3 is 21. I'll just type in 21 right there and simply press OK. And it's going to af affect that area. So like I said, to deselect the, uh, that area, you can press Ctrl D or you can as well just simply come and continue making a new selection so to deselect this selection i'll just come and straight away go into making a brand new selection so that is how you can use the lasso tool to perfect the areas you may have missed out when you are using the mixer brush tool to retouch your image in photoshop so right click and come to gaussian blur and when you feel like the effect is too much you can right click on the selection and simply come to fade gaussian blur and reduce on the opacity of that area so sometimes when people are retouching when it comes to the nose area they tend to select the whole nose as a whole and they apply the gaussian blur which is a very big mistake because that is going to make first of all the nose flat and it's going to make it look big so make sure when it comes to the nose area you simply come and select the dark areas of the nose the way we were using the mr brush tool and also come this other dark side of the nose. Make a selection, apply your Gaussian blur. And also come right here to the highlight. If at all you want to apply it on the highlight of the nose. You can apply it, but this time around, right click on that. And come to fade Gaussian blur. And you can reduce on the opacity of that effect. So below 10 is fine. And simply deselect that area. So right now we are done working with the color layer. So the next thing is going to be working on the textures to clean up or remove blemishes. So this is the before, after for cleaning up or blending the skin tones within the low frequency layer or the color layer. So right now, when it is time to clean up or remove blemishes, we have to select a layer that contains textures. Remember, blemishes are part of skin texture. So just come, select the high frequency layer and simply get the clone stamp tool. So I prefer to use the clone stamp tool to remove blemishes. Make sure the hardness is set all the way to zero and soft round is also selected. Then also mode is normal, opacity 100%, flat 100%. Make sure align is selected and sample always has to be current layer because when you leave it in current and blue and you try cleaning up a blemish rather, it is going to paint back color because it is also sampling information from the color layer. So always make sure sample is set to current layer right here so how to remove a blemish so when using a clone stamp tool and it's showing a plus icon simply press the caps lock key so to reduce on the size of the clone stamp tool or increase it you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard so how to remove a blemish make sure you zoom all the way in because 
you always want to see the blemishes closer to you and eliminate them so how to remove a blemish you are simply going to reduce on the size and make sure it is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to eliminate and move the clone stamp to closer to the blemish but it has to be over an area that doesn't have a blemish but that area should be next to the blemish so how to remove it simply hold down the option key on the keyboard if at all you're using mac then if at all you're using windows hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and when you hold it down simply left click while you're still holding up, down that button simply left click to copy the clean skin area and to remove the blemish you simply release the alternate key on the keyboard and the left click button and simply left click over the blemish and that is going to remove uh, the blemish so that is what i'm going to be doing for the rest of the blemishes so alternate or you can use option alternate left click and release the alternate and the left click button and left click over the blemish to clean it or remove it from uh, your model skin so that is how you can clean up or remove skin imperfections or blemishes from the image so like i said you always have to play around with different sizes of the clone stamp tool while you're removing the blemish because blemishes are going to be different from one area to another and they won't be the same size that is why you always have to keep on playing around with different sizes of the clone stamp tool so let's just clean up the forehead area before we can proceed to the next step so you can see i'm now cleaning up this but always take your time while cleaning up or removing blemishes or skin imperfections or even acne from your images because these are going to determine how much of a careful or careless retoucher or photographer that you are so always make sure to do this perfectly because it is going to basically make you a better photographer out there so to clean up this hairline we are simply going to sample because it has some texture so we're going to sample from the color below here and simply draw a line over that area to eliminate that kind of hairline that was existing or that hair net that was existing in that area so zoom out and you can see this is a now a perfectly retouched image you can even get rid of these snake lines by selecting and drawing over those snake lines so right now we're done working on the skin and you can see the before after before after so after retouching the image let's do a little bit of eye whitening so in order to do the eye whitening basically what we are going to do we are going to come to the hue and saturation adjustment layer so you click left click here come to hue and saturation and simply desaturate the overall image up around negative 70 and close this and press ctrl i with the layer mask selected press ctrl i to invert the effect remember in photoshop black is going to hide and white is going to reveal so we want to reveal the whitening on only the eyes so with that come under the brushes and get the brush tool this time around it is the brush tool hardness at zero soft round selected opacity at 100 percent flat 100 percent smoothing set to zero make sure you have black and white on these two boxes or squares to reset if at all you have any other color you can left click on the tiny ones so make sure you have black and white so you can switch between black and red by using x on the keyboard or you can use this arrow so zoom in by pressing ctrl plus on the keyboard or you can use command plus reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard so the left bracket is going to reduce on the size and you can simply paint on the white area so basically we are now painting on the white area to desaturate or remove the colors that are existing within the white area of the eye and in that way we're going to be uh, whitening the eyes so reduce zoom out and look at the effect so right now we are done doing the eye whitening so let's do some tiny adjustments to this image regarding color grading so in order to create a better looking image you're going to come back and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer 
and come to the master and simply select reds and you're going to come to the lightness and take that down just to create that kind of melanin look to the skin tone the next you're going to come right here to black and white and simply slightly darken the contrast or increase on the contrast of the image so after creating a black and white layer simply come the blend mode and change it from normal and change it all the way down to lean to multiply rather so select multiply reduce on the opacity so at around six that looks okay and after we have done this we are going to come and create a select selective color adjustment layer and simply come and select blacks and increase the blacks in the blacks to intensify or create a more darker look of the shadow areas and now you can easily change or alternate how the blacks look in the image so that is going to be more of a personal test so when you're done doing these adjustments we are now done retouching this image you can as well add a brief shine or glow to the image by simply coming the curves adjustment layer and coming right here and brightening up the image all the way and after that close this and simply double click on the curves adjustment layer and it is going to open up the layer style dialog box and make sure it is set blend if is set to gray and come to the underlying layer left click and drag these sliders up to when they are only affecting the brightest areas within the skin and when you're done doing that simply split this by pressing the option key on the keyboard for mac then for windows the alternate key and click on the right one to blend that into the skin better so we have created a glow or shine to the model skin but that looks too much so i'm going to reduce on the opacity around 43 this is the before after so we only want it to affect the skin so select the layer mask and press ctrl i and with the brush tool white as a foreground color we are going to only paint on the brightest points to create that nice shine or glow to a skin so after doing this let's look at the before and after for skin retouching and everything so this is the before after before after so right now we are going to export or save the image so that it doesn't change in color after we have been able to save it in photoshop so just come to file export export as so when come to export as it is going to open up the export as window in photoshop and right here we have the preview window this is the image itself it is going to load in this preview make sure the format is jpeg quality set all the way to 100 percent resample because we want photoshop to sharpen the image for screen when when we are saving it so make sure the sample is set to by cubic sharper so you click down here and make sure you select by cubic sharper the color space has to be convert to srgb and also check the option that says embed color profile because we want photoshop to integrate the color grid that we have been able to integrate or put or embed into the image that is why we have checked these two options and we don't want the image to change color when we print out the image or when we post it on social media so when you're done doing that simply press export and choose a, de a destination for your image where you want to save it and click save and this is going to be it for this video and if at all you have learned a thing or two from this video don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and see you yet more amazing tutorials and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating